All right, so good morning, good evening, good afternoon, wherever you might be in the world today. Sorry it's been a while since I recorded anything here on YouTube. I just said I wanted to see some things going on and get a better picture of what's been happening. I um, had the opportunity to do a fast recently, and that really opened up my eyes for some things that basically put me in the crosshairs of Satan because I found out some things that he doesn't really want any of us to know. Um, I try to be smooth with my delivery. Uh, my wife tells me now I, I jump all over the place, so I'll try not to do that today. Anyway, um, just to get started on events that are coming up, because if you know there's a blood moon on the 31st, which in some ways can also be deceiving because when you read scripture, it talks about how the devil can use false signs and wonders of what's really going on with that. The next one doesn't occur until 2032, and I'm starting there because a lot of people don't realize where we are. A lot of people think I'm crazy because of what I say. Um... Uh, you know, a lot of people would make guesses. I know I didn't guess this time because I, first of all, I did what I was supposed to do. When you have a question, when it comes to anything dealing with scripture, and this is where we get away from this when it comes to the Lord, and this is how we've been deceived in many ways, is I went to who I was told to ask, the teacher, the one teacher. What I'm going to get into is to tell you a deception that's so bad that it explains what many don't understand is the delusion that you hear about in Second Thessalonians chapter 2, which I got, once again, I got this answer by going to ask the question the right way. So, this is going to clarify why many of you go and read scripture and you don't, and you're confused. Or you go and read scripture and you say, well, there's got to be more than this. Or you go to read scripture and you say, well, how come I don't see what they're talking about? Especially if they talk about the Holy, Holy Spirit. And I'm going to tell you right now, as I told many people, that Satan rigged the game in his favor a long time ago. So that he would be able to delay his time as long as possible. So that he wouldn't get kicked into hell. Because he knows that whenever Jesus returns, or Yahushua, that that's the end for him. And he made a plan to make sure that that didn't happen anytime soon. And that's why I said great deception. So, one of the things I'm going to discuss is what the truth is versus what is the lie. And a lot of, a lot of long-time churchgoers, they say, well, I know scripture, I know scripture. I read the Bible. Well, that's the whole, that's the biggest problem that you're having is that's a lot of the delusion of 2 Thessalonians. You're reading scripture that was altered because of the deceiver who didn't want his time to be up. And what I want to get into is that you say a lot of people say, well, whoever adds or subtracts in this scripture will want to them. Well, when it comes to Satan and his influence over people, they don't care. He doesn't care what that scripture says. He's going to get people to do what he wants anyway, anyhow, to to keep his survival until, so he doesn't have to burn for eternity. Because he knows the scriptures better than anybody does because he was there when everything was written. So he knows how to manipulate in his favor so that people don't understand um, what's going on. All right, so let me just give you a brief summary of where we are. We're at the end simply for the fact that I know and he knows that I know who the the Antichrist is because it's already been some supernatural events occurring that demonstrates that I have this knowledge. And I'll get to that here in a minute before I go any further. Um I just want to let you know that this person is in his position. And if you want to know why so many strange things are happening in politics and around the world and 
it's because of why he, of his influence already being uh, perceived. Okay, so sorry about the thumb there. So where are we? I need you to take you back to when Jesus told his disciples about Matthew 24, where he says, let no one deceive you for many will come in my name saying that I am the Christ. The first major culprit of this deception that a lot of people, even in modern day Christianity and even Catholicism continue to agree with today is that they feel that Constantine was telling the truth. I'm here to let you know you that's the big lie. Constantine and his mother, through Satan, deceived, devised a plan to keep Satan from meeting his demise. There's a lot of things in scripture that you read, and when we interpret the scripture, we always seem to want to think that it applies to our day, our time. What we fail to realize is, is many of those things that were in the scriptures had already been fulfilled. And the reason why we don't know this is because of the way the other scriptures were omitted to keep you from figuring this out. So I'll start with one of the things that Jesus made very clear and see that this is why we stumble and fall in our in our pursuit with our relationship with, with Jesus or Yahshua is because we don't pay attention to the specifics of what he said. There's a lot of people that will sit there and tell you that it's metaphorically speaking. Okay, that's part of the, 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 the deceit of the devil. Jesus never says anything metaphorically speaking. He means when he says it that this is how you are to do it. Now, the hardest one I know that people struggle with, well, then how do I remove a part from my body that defiles me? I'll get to the point where, to help you understand that, yes, there is a significant, that's a significant trial that we all face. However, there's also understanding how to ask for proper forgiveness for the acts that you do. So let's take us back to the time when he was explaining this to his disciples on how to pray. Many of you go to church, you go and you pray, and you think that the Lord has heard you. This is the biggest fallacy of what has been created through Satan. When you don't pray according to your, your instructions that were given to you, you're not being heard like you think. Some people say, well, if Old Testament or says, oh yeah, that, that's what I'm trying to tell you. So when Jesus came, he said, the Father knows what you need before you ask. Therefore, this is how you pray. So as you're thinking about what you want to ask him, you do this prayer, the Our Father. Now, just to give you an idea on who is, in fact, the devil and Satan trying to deceive you. You've recently had Pope Francis come out and tell you he wants to change this prayer. Okay, he would be the only person that would consider this because the devil would be the only one person that would consider altering that prayer because he knows what that prayer means when you say it. It gives you, it gives you personal uh, intimacy with the Lord if when you do it the right way. So here's what has happened and transpired, and this is where you're going to get into how we're in what I call the great delusion now. So when 
When Jesus told his disciples to go out into the world and preach the gospel, the, the problem with scripture is we think that all the, they only went as far as Greece. Because everything, if you notice, with, with any type of a background in, in scripture, when preachers preach, they start talking about their time in Greece and their time in Rome and all that, and basically that. Well, that's part of the problem is they're, they're, they're going along with the agenda because to go against the agenda is going to go against the societies that were put in place to keep Satan from going to burn. <coughs> okay. Another thing that's going to talk about is what they call the Holy Spirit. Many of you are hearing people say, oh, I have the Holy Ghost. I have the Holy Ghost. I, ha I, I can do the, the Holy Ghost is within me. I'm saved. Okay, once again, the devil doesn't want to burn, so he comes up with all kind of tactics to help you be deceived. If you really look at the scriptures and you listen to what happens when you receive the power of the Holy Ghost, you'll realize, especially for those of you who take missionary trips, first of all, if you take a missionary trip, you really don't need money. You sit there and say, well, things cost. Okay, but here's the deal. The Lord's going to provide what you need when he, where he ever he wants you to go. You don't have to, you don't have, if you go and pray the right way, you say, I'm going to go on a missionary trip and you do the Our Father prayer like you're supposed to and in secret. <coughs> then he will provide you their needs to do what he wants you to do. Now, here's the other thing, though. When it comes to the power of the Holy Spirit, and if you listen to the disciples, there was, when it came down, they said it gave them utterance in all languages under the heavens. They were speaking Galilean Aramaic, okay? They'd never been anywhere outside of Judea that we know of at that time. The thing about it is, <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> no, when the Holy Spirit came down, they could speak Aramaic, and somebody from another country could understand exactly what they were saying. And the interpret portion from speaking to the Spirit has to deal with when they would see things that people wouldn't quite understand. The interpreter would be there to say, "This is what we're. This is what we see." Because they would they could see things that other people couldn't see, like demons and whatnot. So, here again, I'm going to explain to you what, what happened. So, Jesus went out into the world. He preached the gospel. He taught his disciples. They went out and they preached the gospel. History has been altered so that you don't know where they went. They went all over the world, as they've been told. Because remember, Jesus showed them how to walk on water. He showed them how to do things that most ordinary people couldn't do with the power of the Holy Spirit. Okay, one of the books that was omitted is called The Martyrdom of Bartholomew. And it actually quotes in there where it says that he wore the same clothes for 27 years and it was neither dirty nor was it torn. So that gives you the power of the Holy Spirit to show you that it can take care of you, even your own clothes, that you don't have to worry about what you're wearing. And that's why he said, be not concerned with what you wear, for your clothes will be taken care of by the Spirit. So I've actually kind of witnessed this a little bit. I brought a shirt that has the Lamb of God and has the line on it since I've been doing this fast and been interacting with the Spirit. And every time I go to work out in it and I go to smell it, I thought it would stink and it doesn't. So that tells me that there's a truth to that statement. So here's what happened. They went out and they actually set up, and there's proof of this. If you, there's a video online that talks about how Jerusalem was set up because you don't know, because Christ Jesus actually went out and set up his new place where he wanted people to go. And then Britain is the place that has proof of that. That's where he went while he was not around Israel. And he sent the disciples to set up. If you think I'm joking, 
Just ask yourself this question. How did the United Kingdom, a small island, become so powerful? Well, yeah, hold on. Sorry about that. So, they had, he had already done what he needed to do to get things ready for the scriptures to be fulfilled for his return once he, the time was done. Along came Constantine with his vision, you know, when when Rome fell and the, Christ, and, the and the Christian faith was growing like, I mean, it was spreading like wildfire. It was all over the world, like I told you. It had already been preached. So the, the time was getting ready for it when, this, when the signs were showing that Jesus was going to return. So Satan came up with a plan to say, I got a vision from Jesus, and this is what he said. That happened 1,700 years ago. So to just give you an example, from 1,700 years to now, you've been living that delusion. One of the ways he took away the power of the Holy Spirit is by convincing people that the he was a she, the she was a he. The trilogy was father, father, son, and another man. That's not true. If you look in um, the Arab, the Muslim, the, the excuse me, the Jewish pronunciation of the Holy Spirit is in the feminine context, which means like when you speak a language is feminine or masculine, they refer to the Holy Spirit as feminine. So there you can see it's already been misinterpreted on purpose. Okay. Sorry about that. So now, this kind of gives you an idea that, I'm only about to lose that recording time, that this is the delusion and it's about to come to an end and you're going to see reality. And this is why I, I can show you how I learned how the Antichrist came to be because you actually bowed before him and you showed and he showed himself in an image and most people didn't even catch on because because he didn't speak Hebrew we didn't know that his image was portrayed in the movie and his birth was before portrayed in the movie because all the languages all the things that refer to him are re in reference to a book called the book of Enoch that nobody really was familiar with and when I discovered this, this is how I knew exactly that I was on to the right person and how he had blended in and that our president himself is actually aware of this. So um, I'm going to post this portion and I'll come back with the next part. Have a blessed day.